Hey, uh, Ken German here, Chief Marketing Officer for Small to Medium Sized Businesses and a Business Growth Strategy Coach. Um, wanted to talk today, it's the 25th of April. My lovely wife is coming home tomorrow from Russia and I'm looking forward to it. She's been gone for three months and uh, I'll be super excited to have her back. Uh, we have a lot of great things I'm gonna going on in their lives and be nice to have her here to help out with what's going on and do some furniture shopping and having happy fun times. Um, just getting the mail here. We have a tendency to get more junk mail than actual mail. Not yet. Let's see. Um, what's happening today? I'm working with my graphic designer to do the logos for the 12 companies that I have mapped out. Some people are going to think that's kind of crazy, but the whole concept behind the 12 companies is to create the necessary infrastructure to be able to support the two franchise businesses that I'm going to create. And to be able to provide all the services necessary for those businesses to be successful and for my clients to be successful because I like to have all that stuff under one roof. So web design, graphic design, uh, video uh, video development as far as doing videos for clients, uh, book writing, I said graphic design, lead generation, Facebook marketing, uh, online marketing as far as uh, Google AdWords and pay-per-click and all that. Um, I'll have teams in place. I have teams available to do that right now. And I'll be creating the business necessary because I know that Business owners didn't get into the business that they're in to be able to have to learn marketing. They didn't get into the business they're in in order to have to learn sales. Now, sales is something they have to learn, obviously, because I can't do that for you. But that's the general concept as I'm creating myself and branding myself. And we'll be talking more about this in the book that's coming out in late June, early July. And talking about the seven essentials, um, the seven essential steps for effective marketing in your business. I'm a kind of a no BS kind of guy, so I'm gonna take the experiences that I've had in my own business and in my own struggles, I'll be sharing them within the book and then how I've overcome them. And uh, super, super excited about that. Um, some of you that know me, on, you know, your friends with me on Facebook are, are starting to see that I'm clearing out a lot of people. I have over I think it's probably close to 5,000 Facebook friends. If not, it's pretty dang close. And um, I'm getting rid of all the negative, all the haters and the whiners, because I just don't have time for that. And I don't want to have my life have to be connected to that energy. So my approach to that is to have them wish them love, prosperity, happiness, and distance. You know, you can, you can whine and cry all you want in your life, and that's fine. If you want to be miserable, I don't. And I don't have to be around that if I don't choose to. In that spirit of that token of not being wanting to be miserable, I wasn't expecting this this morning. But it's important to talk about. This morning, I was made a comment on Facebook to my friend Darla about one of the things that a guy never likes to hear from a girl about, you know, I just wanted to be friends. And Darla and I were talking a little bit and then all of a sudden this person that six years ago I had a crush on, way before Lara, had responded back saying, well, that's why you and I are never friends. That's why you and I are not friends. 
And in reality, we never were friends, but that's a different story. But I had a crush on her. She didn't like it. We stopped talking to each other. That was that was done. And uh, I said, well, I'm married to the love of my life. And then her nasty comment, which is really mean, and I didn't deserve it, was how much did you pay for her? And I'm like, what the hell did I ever do to you? Those are the kinds of people that I don't want to have anywhere near me. So she wasn't a Facebook friend of mine, but I did block her. Because I don't want to be connected to those kind of people. It was totally unfounded. Person's name isn't important. She knows who she is. And karma's a bitch. Um, enough of that. Well, I'm, I'm just not that kind of person. Um, if, if you knew me, who I was, fifteen years ago, shortly, I'll, yeah, Actually, I'll, I'll, that'll be another book. All right. Um, I'm a completely person, different person than what I was fifteen years ago, and it took a divorce to make me realize what I needed to do to be able to love myself, to respect myself, and to be able to value myself. And at least the divorce was the beginning of my journey because I remember I was married for about seven years at the time. We had gone through marriage counseling and the psychologist had told me, said, you know, Ken, all this hate and all this anger that you carry around with you is only hurting you. You're never going to get your mother to forgive you. You're never going to get your mom to admit that she was wrong. You're never going to get what you want because they don't see that they're they don't see how wrong they are because they see that they're just being normal. I'm not, I'm not going to air out my laundry here, but I'm just giving the example. This is You won't be able to move forward with your life until you're willing to let go of those coals that you're holding on your hands that are burning you and all of the people that truly love and care about you. And I'm, I tend to be a visual person. And that was the visual person that I needed to make me understand that the marriage that I was in wasn't right for me. So I, I literally saw the coals dropping to the ground. And the next day, I was in the divorce attorney's office. I'm telling you this because it's all about you setting your boundaries. It's all about you understanding that you need to love yourself, you need to honor yourself, you need to respect yourself. Until you do, you're going to be continuing to be in those codependent relationships that are unhealthy for you, and you're never going to find true love. That came out way more than I thought it was going to be. Um, so we're good there. So this particular person kind of, kind of poked a little bit at the coals, but uh, I responded much differently now than what I would have 10 years ago. I would have been out for blood 10 years ago. Now I just realize, you know, I'm a duck in water. This is all about her problems, not mine. And I'm moving on. Ah, what happy thoughts. Lara is coming home tomorrow. She has a... I remember when we first met in person... I want to go to a happy story. When we first met in person, um, she had to fly from Volgorod to Moscow, and then Moscow to Madrid, and then Madrid to Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And 
She is the most amazing woman. She's just freaking amazing. She's a, she's just a trooper. When we first met, it was kind of interesting because she had not. When she she made it. It was it was funny. She was in Moscow, and then I got the notification on my cell phone that says her flight to Madrid was going to be late, and that she I, I imagine she was, she had to run between flights to make her flight. And I kind of imagine the bionic woman running down the tarmac. <laughs> kind of like that. And when I she came and there was probably about 16 or 18 hours where I had no idea where she was. And I just had to have blind faith that God was bringing us together. Because when I got, when I was in Santa Domingo waiting for her at the airport, her flight was late again out of Madrid. Never fly Iberia Airlines if you can if you can avoid it. And when she arrived in uh, Santo Domingo, she was more beautiful than I saw her on Skype because we we dated on Skype for over a year. Well, we dated on Skype for about six weeks before we met, but. Um, I didn't buy her. God bought us together. Because I was ready to be loved. I loved myself. And anyway, so when we met each other in in Santo Domingo, um, it was a beautiful time. We we spent nine days there, and we, we just knew at that point, well, she didn't admit it at the time, but I just knew that she was the one. I would have married her right then if I could have. And that's kind of a funny story, too, because six months later, when I went to, well, it's actually a little more, in April of 2011, was it 2011? Yeah, 2011? It was April 2011 when I went to Moscow to propose to her. I got to the Moscow airport, and... She sees me and she goes, you know, I, I know you that you have the ring with you, and that when you when we get back to the when we get to the hotel, you're going to propose to me because I've been rehearsing the answer for six months. I said, why the hell didn't you tell me six months ago? So I proposed, and and, and, and that's the great love story. So that'll be the book I'll be writing in about six months, um, as far as uh, helping you find true love. Talks a little bit. I'll be talking a little bit about international dating. Um, I have about 12 different books mapped out. Going to do a dump of the encyclopedia that's been rolling around my brain. But I want to basically, like I said before, I want to be able to write a business-related book and a spiritual, inspirational book every year. And they'll be about six months apart. Um... On May 5th, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to go in with a with one, one, one of my best friends, Terry, and we're going to go in and do a proof of concept to be able to turn $2,000 into $15,000 a month in 60 days. And that'll be a residual income that we're going to continue to grow to do a proof of concept that will grow to $100,000 a month by December of 2016. The beautiful thing about this particular thing is it does not require you to recruit, does not require you to sell, and doesn't require you to chase after friends and family. After I hit a certain income level, then I'm going to create a training program for this, this system and I'm going to be allowing a certain elect, select few to create some more case studies. So in about six months, we'll be opening this up to more people. But my intention is in six months to be at $100,000 a month. A million dollars a year. Um, you don't have to believe it's possible. 
but you can be watching the videos on YouTube as I'm posting them to do this. My intention and my purpose for doing this is to provide the necessary funding for my business to grow to its ultimate goal and be able to roll out all 12 companies that I'm going to create and get them rolling so that I can create my vision that our divine creator has given to me to do. So on May 5th as is, is, is ground zero, I'll hit $15,000 a month by um, between July 1st to July 15th, and then it should hit $100,000 a month by December. The beautiful part about this is that once you get your initial, once you do your initial deposit, you'll get your initial deposit back, and from the, that point forward, you are playing on house money. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, Lara kind of coming back has interrupted my mojo a little bit. So my first draft of the book may not make the May 1st date, but it'll be pretty damn close. I'm going to go in today and start mapping out Chapter 1. Uh, chapter 1 will be on mindset because it's a very important component about you and your business. You, your business, life, and you, your life, and business. And we'll take it from there. Um, this is My name is Ken German. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for Small to Medium-Sized Businesses, and I'm a business strategy coach. My unique selling proposition is I guarantee that I will double your business's income in 12 months and increase its profitability by at least 50% or you'll get your money back. Nobody else does this. Why can I say that? Because I know that almost every business is broken in the same way. So have an awesome day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.